Hello everybody, I'm Dan Herring and welcome back to my channel, Fish Den 365 Today we're going to be talking about a forgotten bait that is a cold water killer. So before we get into this uh, forgotten bait today, somewhat of a secret bait these days because uh, nobody fishes them anymore, at least I don't think hardly anybody does. Just wanted to apologize for the situation that we have here in my area here. Uh, this is my kitchen. We're redoing our kitchen, our dining room, and our living room. All fully going to be redone, refurnished, repainted. So we're just uh, in the throes of getting all that done. But it's, it's a lot better than being out in my boathouse and tackle area right now because it's freezing cold today. And uh, it's just a lot more comfortable in the house. So we'll be doing the video from the kitchen here today. The reason why I'm here though is because we've got these new lights in and the lighting is really good for these kind of videos. So in the future, I hope to be able to do some videos from the dining room, right at the dining room table as I show you different baits and that kind of thing. All right, let's talk about today's bait. It is made by Mans and it's called the Mans Stingray Grub. So some of you may be familiar with the Stingray Grub. This is an old bait. It's been around for a long, long time and it's kind of a unique bait. We're gonna, we're gonna get into this uh, shortly so this they have two sizes a three inch size hopefully you can see that and then a larger four inch size and so two different sizes the winter time i generally tend to throw the three inch size the most most the smaller size typically tends to do better in the winter time when the water is in the 40s and below and there's a number of ways to fish this thing now i became aware of this bait back in the early 80s and it was watching an episode of Jerry McInnes's Fishing Hole. A lot of you who are my age might remember that show. It was a very well done show. A lot of people really enjoyed Jerry McInnes and the Fishing Hole. And he had a show back in the 80s, and I actually have this on tape. And this tells you how far back this is. It's on a beta tape, a Betamax tape, before VHS was even a thing. And uh, But I have that tape somewhere in my library. That's a subject for another video down the road. But uh, I'll never forget the video. I watched it. I wore the tape out because I thought it was a really cool video. Him and uh, I don't know who he was with somebody. He was with somebody. I forget who. And they were fishing uh, up in New Hampshire. It was either Winnipesaukee or Squam Lake. I think it was Squam Lake. It was uh, late fall, early winter. And they were throwing this bait and just catching smallmouth after smallmouth after smallmouth. And these smallies were really nice. They were large sized, really fat. And the, the way that caught my attention, the thing that caught my attention was how they were catching them. They were throwing these baits out on light jig heads like I have on here. And they were just letting a bait fall to the bottom. And then once it hit the bottom, they just lift up the rod slowly and just let the bait follow back down to the bottom again on a slack, semi-slack line, reel up the line, lift it back up. So they were actually slow. They were stroking the jig, but not how you would normally stroke a jig. They were just doing it real slow. So they just lift it up real slow and then this bait would fall back down. And they're catching them like crazy doing that and that got my attention. I was wondering, well, what, what's going on? And so I remember McCannis explaining how the bait had a really unique fall to it when you had a light jig head on it. And it does. There's actually two ways this bait falls depending on the weight of the jig head. The first way that it falls if you have a heavier jig head on is that it'll spiral down just like a tube. It does that death spiral. So it looks like a dead or dying bait fish. If you go light enough with the jig head, it doesn't quite do that spiral, especially on the end of a long cast. Instead, what it does is it wiggles back and forth, and it's very unique, and it probably has to do with this paddle tail and the stiffness of the bait. It's a rather stiff bait. It's not soft like today's soft plastics, but this bait will, uh, it will have this strange fall where it actually wiggles back and forth, and I think that's actually what they were doing on that particular day. They were using real light jig heads. They're fishing fairly deep water, but they're just letting it go down real slow, and they're just popping smallmouth after smallmouth. And over the years, I, I fished this bait, especially in cold water, and found that it's equally good on largemouth and smallmouth. I've caught as many largemouths on it as I have smallies, but it's a great smallie bait. And there's a lot of ways that I've discovered you can fish this thing. You know, I would one of the things I would never do with this bait because it's a little odd and unusual is this bait is not like like I mentioned It's not soft like today's soft plastics. You can see that tail is rather stiff and the plastic itself is hard It's not soft at all I would never Texas rig this thing because I don't know if I'd be able to drive the hook through one of these things It's just really really thick mass plastic 
But that's the that's the difference. That's the thing that makes the bait unique under the right circumstances, I think. So I just described one way to fish it, right? A light jig head, throw it out there. If you have a rocky bottom, and you can do that real slow stroke technique where you just lift up, let it come back down and fall back down. You could also just drag it on the bottom or just short hop it on the bottom. You could do that with a regular uh, mushroom head uh, jig like I have on this one, or you can throw it on a football head. Another thing that I've done with this is I've put it on the back of a hair jig. This was a trailer on the back of a black hair jig. This, this color of this bait is called avocado. It's a nice green color, and then I just usually put a little bit of chartreuse on the tail. This one here, I like this color too, especially if I'm trying to imitate crawfish. That's root beer, another nice color. So, you know, it's, it's great on the back of a hair jig. It's good by itself like this. There's, there's a couple of other ways or techniques that I like to do with this thing. We'll get into that in a few minutes. So these baits uh, are still available today. The only way I know how to get them though is to get on Man's actual website. The Man's website, they still sell these things in both three inch and four inch. You could also get them on eBay, I'm sure of that. But uh, Man still sells them, but I can't find them on Bass Pro Shops or Tackle Warehouse. Somebody may carry them, but it doesn't seem like the, the typical tackle outlets carry them anymore. They're just not that popular, I suppose, which is all right with me because they still catch fish like crazy. And if you like the cold water fish, I would encourage you to get out there and try one of these when the water's cold because they work really well. I mean, they're right up there with blade baits for me when I'm, you know, when I'm throwing these kind of things in cold water. The other thing about this bait is there's another technique that I like to do, two more that I like to talk about. One is, you know, we talked about uh, that, uh, that's, that slow stroking technique. And I never, I don't think I ever did a, a video about jig worming, but jig worming is, is just very similar to this where you take a light, typically mushroom ball head jig, something like that, light wire hook, and you put a plastic worm on the back of it. Usually it's a small plastic worm, six inches to four inches, five inches, something in that range. And the idea of a jig worm is because the, the jig head is light and you have the light wire hook, you just throw it. You can throw it around in, in weeds, especially, or in the edge of weeds. And because you have that lighter jig head, it doesn't penetrate into the weeds very deep. It gets on top of the weeds, and it's it's actually pretty weedless. And you can you can rip it out. Like if it hangs up slightly, you can just pop your rod tip, and it rips right out. And oftentimes, that's how you'll catch fish with a jig worm. Well, that's a great way to catch fish with this bait as well. That's where I like to use a little bit of the bigger one, especially if I'm fishing a, a lake that's got a good milfoil uh, a lot of milfoil in it because uh, this is a really good largemouth bass technique. You can also do this with a Ned rig. I've done this with Ned rigs already too. Where you just pop that out of the weeds. And sometimes that uh, technique where you're popping it and then the thing goes back down in the weeds like it's trying to get away and bury into the weeds real quick, that can be a killer. That could be a really good generator of strikes, of reaction strikes. So uh, something to try with the, with the man's uh, stingray grub. And because the stingray grub is stiff and not so soft, it rips out of the weeds a lot easier So than, say, a soft plastic worm that might hang up into the weeds. So this kind of bait, along with a Ned rig, which is just a straight bait, uh, it lends itself to, to that uh, technique where you can pitch it into the, to the weeds, to milfoil and that kind of thing, and just kind of rip it through and let it go back down into there, and, and oftentimes that'll catch fish. And now for the last way that I like to fish this, and this is the one that uh, I thought was a secret. I thought it was my secret. I thought no one else ever did this with this bait. A while back I was experimenting. I do a lot of experimenting with baits and actions and that kind of thing. And I... I was looking at drop shots in a large tub to see how they worked and how they reacted to what I would do with the line. And I decided on a particular day to nose hook one of these baits with a drop shot, as a drop shot. So I had the drop shot weight and this was just free floating with a small nose hook. hook. And I was surprised how it looked in the water. You know, most drop shot baits, the softer the better, you gotta be real soft. Well, this, this was different. It didn't, doesn't, obviously it's not soft, but when you let that go down there, maybe a, you know, have a dropper of a foot or 15 inch, inches or so, and you let the, the, the man's stingray grub uh, go to the bottom. So you have your weight down here and then you just let your line go slack. This thing would have this crazy fall to the bottom like it was a half dead bait fish or something, or crayfish. Or, and, and then you could just kind of pop it back up and come up again and then go back down. And I thought, hey, that looks really good. So I got to fishing it 
and I found that it was a really, really good drop shot bait. And I thought, this is great. No one ever knows. No one's ever going to fish this on a, on a drop shot. So I have a bait here that the fish haven't seen and they're never going to see it. And, and uh, I wasn't even going to share this with you because <laughs> it works really good. But it's not as much of a secret as I thought. Uh, some time ago, I was watching a, a video by Smallmouth Crush and he was going over his five uh, go-to drop shot baits. And uh, I'll, link that, uh, I'll link that video up here so you can watch it. So he's going through the five drop shot baits and he gets through, you know, one, two, three or so. And I'm like, yeah, I know all these and they're good drop shot baits. And then he just shocked me because he came up with this one. He goes, oh yeah, this man's stingray grub. I don't understand it. It doesn't look really that great in the water. It doesn't look like anything. He goes, but it really works as a drop shot. And I'm thinking, how the hell did he find that out? I thought I was the only one that knew that. So uh, now I'm sharing it with you. So if you, have, if you ever want to throw a little something different on a drop shot, if the, if the fish seem to be getting very pressured and, and it's getting hard to catch them on the standard drop shot baits, to me, this is a standard drop shot bait. That's how good it is. It catches fish on them. Don't be uh, afraid to give that a try. Well, if you got something out of the video, please hit the thumbs up. Hit that like button if you would. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We're Certified Bassified, and as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.